$25,000 a month in alimony. $25,000. And $4,000 a month for food. For food. What the fuck was she eating? For four grand a month. So you got to think about all that situation. $25,000 a month. Another man driving around his car fucking his wife in a house he's still paying a mortgage on. Now, I'm not saying he should have killed her. But I understand. Why are we telling women, in a very loud voice, that you have no reason to commit to your husbands because you'd be very well looked after by him, whether you're together or not? Isn't it a wonderful day to be in love? I wouldn't know. <laughs> I've been divorced three times and I'm drowning in alimony. <laughs> That's why I had to take this crappy job. Gary, you got to give me half of everything you own. Then I got divorced. Clint took half my money and the rights to my only viable book property. I started drinking. I finally pulled myself out of the gutter, needed something more stable, got into this. Well, it's because it was the best thing for the kids. The kids are doing great. Really? Okay. H have you noticed that Tommy's scared to death the girls? They should be afraid of girls. They pretend to like you, and then they take all your stuff. Okay. Your wife's estimate of her annual outgoings and expenditure. Her solicitor faxed it over this morning. 700 pounds to get her hair done? Yes, that's not so outrageous, but some of it is. Bikini waxing? I'm watching like flowers. Sorry. I'm still getting used to having to knock on my own door. Well, it's my door now, Gary. And of course you don't have to knock. You can ring the bell. <laughs> There's possibly no reason for a man to get married in the Western world anymore. All it is is a contract where a man signs his assets and freedoms away to what is essentially a slave mistress and her muscle, the government. The government has taken away any advantages that used to exist for married couples. The government officially does not support family. Men don't fear commitment, which is a common accusation. They just don't want relationships with women who have become almost universally toxic. Everybody needs a prenup. People think you gotta be rich to get a prenup. Oh no. You got 20 million. Your wife wants 10 big deal. You ain't starving. But if you make 30,000 and they, your wife wants 15, you might have to kill her. Take the parlors, for example. This wife was initially awarded £250,000 per year, plus houses and child support. But this wasn't enough for her. She went back to court to claim an extra 150000 a year. And she got it. The issue here is not the amounts of money involved, nor the celebrity of the victim. The issue here is the type of female mentality exhibited by the case. It's a mentality of maximum greed and vindictiveness. And the worrying thing is that it's not at all unusual. A great many women are greedy and grasping heady with legal powers and having the malice to use them. Often these women refuse to take a man's name on marriage, but are happy to take his money on divorce. The question is, why do women have so much power to victimise men on divorce? Why is the family court system so thoroughly biased in women's favour, despite our supposedly male-dominated society? Once again it's about money. Women spend a hell of a lot more money than men do. She spends her own money, she spends her husband's money, she takes her husband's money on divorce and inherits his money when he dies. Business and government are going to depend on this net transfer of wealth from men to women and they facilitate this in whatever way they can because it directly affects their bottom line. This is why every evening, without fail, between 70 and 75% of all television advertising on all channels is aimed at women, whilst only 8 to 10% is aimed at men. When a man earns 10,000 a year, he might spend £100 a year on toiletries. When he earns a million a year, he might spend £200 on toiletries. But a woman spending on herself is much more proportional to available funds. If a woman earns 10 k a year, she might spend £500 on toiletries and makeup. If she has a million, she'll spend 20 grand on these items and then some. It's because of this difference in spending that means business will support any kind of measure that ends up with women getting hold of more wealth from men. Women are the juicy cash cows of business. What the city experts say is this, the key to the whole show is women's wear. If you get that right, everything else falls into place. If you, go, if you don't get that right, it doesn't matter what you do with men's wear and food, nothing works. So it's all about women's wear. So business can't easily get what it needs from men, but it can from women. And they know that women can get money from men in exchange for sex. Most often a very expensive exchange, often prostitution dressed up as romance. I have to go back to work, you look great. She has my card. And we'll help her use it, sir. All we have to do is whatever it takes 
to make her happy. Four thousand six hundred and six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't a get down on one knee type proposal. It's very much uh, shall we get married <laughs> um, while watching TV. Let me say, well, yeah, all right. <laughs> so did the subject of a ring not come up? Um, it did afterwards, and I went looking for a ring, and it was me going looking for a ring. So even though she proposed, it would have been me buying the ring. But yeah, I, I'm okay with that. I'm gonna need a new dress. And I need a new pair of shoes. I saw these fake eyelashes. There's this really nice shawl that goes with the dress. Pantyhose. So, what type of guys do you like? Free spirits. Nice guys. Bad boys. Rich. 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 I really liked her. But she didn't exactly feel the same way about me, and I got the forehead kiss after spending 90 stinking dollars on theater tickets. Been out of a girl on a date and not paid anything? <laughs> yes, I have. Um, but that was a mistake. <laughs> I, I, I managed to go out on a date w without um, my wallet, and I had to then ask her. And she was not impressed. <laughs> if I'm going to have, a, if I'm going to go out on a date, I need to know that I have money to support both of us on that date. So business and government encourages anything at all that helps get money out of frugal, low-spending males and into the hands of excessive, high-spending females. It really is that simple. That's why the media is biased against men. That's why divorce settlements are nonsensical and men can be left destitute. That's why women are angels on our televisions, no matter what crimes they commit. That's why the law, despite being drafted almost exclusively by men, is so anti-man. It's nothing personal. It's strictly business. We'll need to caucus again to draw up a picture of your husband's net worth. A map of enemy territory, so to speak. You said that he's a television producer? He has a soap opera, The Sands of Time. It's a silly show. Well, it'll be yours soon. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Thank you, yeah. Mr. Massey. Bye-bye.